Albanerics are humanoid beings in the lands between, artificial life forms made by human hands. Thus, many believe them to be soulless and impure since they are untouched by the Erd Tree's grace. First generation Albanerics have human like appearances, but minimal to no use of their legs, which keeps them immobilized without the help of the dire wolves they often ride into battle. They use a tall oval shield made of metal with silver ornamentation representing the primordial drop of dew from which they are said to have been created. Latena, an NPC, is a first generation Albaniric, found at the end of the Lakeside Crystal Cave near the Albaniric village in Lyurnia Lakes. Second generation Albanerics are shorter, gray skinned creatures, closer resembling frogs with large faces and a pair of large, round, black eyes. While they use primitive weapons, such as wooden clubs, they, unlike their predecessors, have full use of their legs and are rather agile. When you first find Latena, you promise to take her to the Halleck Tree, where she joins you by willingly becoming a Spirit Ash Summon. Her wolf companion, Lobo, was killed during a raid on the village by a few tarnished under the direction of Sir Gideon Ofnir. The all knowing. This event was previously predicted by one of the finger crones. Favor can be yours. <sighs> slaughter, slaughter, slaughter. <sighs> the all hearing slaughtered. But alas, it was for naught. But all you need do is snatch it from the big pot. <laughs> Pretty the poor, poor fool. <laughs> Albus the Albaniric held one of the halves of the secret medallion that allows passage to the Halleck tree. He entrusts you with this half before sending you to find Latena. Only after being given the medallion will she ask to join you on your journey, giving you vague directions on where to find the medallion's other half, far to the north in the mountaintops of the giants. A commander Nile, who lords over Castle's soul deep in the snowy mountains, holds the other half. It is only through his defeat that we can obtain it, completing the medallion and unlocking a hidden path from the Grand Lift of Rold. There you find a city, Ordina liturgical town, south before Mikola's Halleck tree. It is unknown what the origins of this city are, but there you encounter many first and second generation Albanerics. It is here you can finish Latena's questline by taking her spear ashes to the apostate derelict, an old ruined church just past the town, where a slumbering giant Albaneric woman rests. Latena kneels near the woman, Philia, and says, O oh, young, yet towering sister of ours, let the birthing droplet in and create life for us, for all the Albanerics. There is no further explanation of this place or what the Albanerics were doing here, but there are many clues. First, an apostate is an individual who abandons their religion or belief system, which is in stark contrast from the site being called a church. Perhaps the Albanerics had given up an old religion and began following a new one. This could represent their cutting ties with their old faith in favor of Mikola's Halleck tree. On the other hand, it could be speculated that the Albanerics have abandoned faith altogether, especially given the way the world of the lands between view their kind, as soulless, impure beings. Much can be speculated about the end of Latena's questline, but one of the items you find in the apostate derelict provides us with clues for someone entirely unexpected. There you find the silver mirror shield, the same shield carried by Loretta, once the royal carrion knight you fought in Carrion Manor, only that isn't her title anymore. She is now known as Loretta, Knight of the Halleck Tree. The shield's item description reads, Shield of radiant silver, festooned with amber and carried by Loretta, Knight of the Halleck Tree. The shape is said to imitate that of a sacred drop of dew, which inspired the absurd rumor that Loretta herself was an Albaniric. 
Once you've gained access to the Halleck tree, you once again encounter Loretta, in her physical form this time, and must defeat her to progress any further. After she is defeated, she drops two items, one of which being Loretta's mastery, a spell. The description reading, Sorcery used by Loretta, Knight of the Halleck Tree, creates a magic great bow and fires four great arrows simultaneously, developed by Loretta after her long, bloody journey to seek out a place where the Albanerics could live in peace. It is clear that these descriptions contradict one another, from one telling the player it is absurd to assume that Loretta was an Albaneric, to the other recounting real events that had Loretta leading the Albanerics to a new home. Here we begin to dive into speculation, as the information we're given about this topic quickly runs dry. So far, I believe it can be concluded that Loretta, Knight of the Halleck Tree and former Carrion Royal Knight, was in fact an Albaneric. When we fight Loretta, both times she is on her horse, we never once see her move on her own two feet, which could hint at her being unable to move without assistance. This can be compared to the dire wolf riding Albanerics who protect Ordina and the gateway to the Halleck Tree. There are also similarities between Loretta's and the first generation Albanerics chosen weaponry, sickles, and a bow. But now we are left wondering, why were the Albanerics looking for a place to live in peace? Who was killing them? And why was Loretta's being an Albaneric kept secret? The most interesting and mysterious aspect of the Albanerics is their origin. It is never concretely said where the Albanerics come from. However, there is strong evidence that suggests what they were created from comes from the Eternal Cities, Nokron and Noxtella. Presently, Nokron and Noxtella are only ruins of the once grand cities buried deep underground. It is said that this vast region is the grave of civilizations that flourished before the planting of the Erd Tree. They are home to the Nox people, as well as other beings, one of which is the Silver Tear. Silver Tears are formless life forms that have the ability to transfigure, or mimic, people and other objects. Many Silver Tears can transform into silver humanoids to attack you while others simply transform a part of their bodies into weapons. When digging deeper into what these creatures are, you discover that these slime-like creatures are the result of an attempt by the Eternal City to forge a lord. The current state of the Eternal Cities was a punishment after angering the Greater Will and committing an act deemed as treason against it. The reason I bring these cities up is because there are many items and enemies found here that share a similarity to the Albanerics, two of which are Celestial Dew and Dew Kissed Herba. Notice how Dew is in the name of both of these items, which correlates directly to the primordial drop of Dew, said to be from which Albanerics were created. Another item that is littered around both cities is an item called a Silver Tear Husk which is described as a hardened husk shed by a silver tear. The silver tear makes mockery of life, reborn again and again into imitation. Perhaps one day it will be reborn a lord. There is something key in this description that I want to expand upon, and that is this eternal state of being reborn. While traversing the eternal cities, the player will pick up an item known as a larval tear, the item required to have Renala, queen of the moon, birth people anew. The larval tear is the very core of the silver tears. As much as it is described as a substance, it is also very much a living organism. But what does this have to do with albanerics? Well, from here on out, this is all mere speculation, since the writers of Elden Ring do not give us any clear answers. The connections go as follows. Albanerics were created by human hands and have silver blood. They carry silver oval shields, shaped after a drop of dew that is said to have created them. Albanerics are seen as impure by the Golden Order of the Ur Tree and of the Greater Will by proxy. In comparison, Silver Tears were created by the people of the Eternal Cities in an attempt to create their own lord. The creation of the Silver Tears is considered a mockery of life, 
presumably shunned by the Golden Order and possibly the very reason why Nokron and Noxtella were banished underground, never to see the sky again. Larval tears, said to be the very core of their existence, can be used to be born anew by Renala, using the amber egg given to her by Radagon. I believe this is a hint as to how and where the Albanerics came from. I would birth thee as a sweeting, fair and fine. Think of Renala's sweetings, the young juveniles birthed anew by the amber egg of Queen Renala. One of their most noteworthy traits regarding them is their inability to walk. Instead, they crawl, similarly to the first generation Albanerics. And remember Loretta's shield? Shield of radiant silver, festooned with amber. The amber egg itself is known as the rune of the unborn, which at first can be thought to mean those who are not born yet. However, when tying in all of the additional information the game provides us, I believe the Rune of the Unborn may refer to those who are created and not born, existence without birth. I believe that the drop of dew the Albanerics were created from came from the Eternal Cities. There could be an argument made that the Nox created them before being banished to live underground, but I want to expand upon the idea even further. It seems like many of the beliefs and traditions of the Nox were shared with the people of Raya Lucaria and Celia, the town of sorcery. All of them base their beliefs on the night sky, the stars, and even the moon. A talisman the player can pick up called the Moon of Noxtella reveals that the people of the Eternal Cities lost their black moon. The Moon of Noxtella was the guide of countless stars. The connection between the surface world and the underground cities is also a geological one, with the passageways to both Nokron and Noxtella being in very close proximity to the aforementioned locations. It can be confirmed that many things were shared between the sorcerers and the eternal cities. A clue to this is the Celestial Dew, an item originating from the leveled cities that is required to perform the absolution at the Church of Vows located high in the east of Laernia Lakes, directly above the Ansel River. And the same goes for Larval Tears. Could the Nox have shared something else? With the knowledge of their impending banishment, I wonder if the people of the Eternal Cities might have given the sorcerers they were so closely connected to the means to complete their work, to create a lord. The armor of a Nox swordster states, now they live under a false night sky, in eternal anticipation of their liege, of the coming age of the stars, and their lord of night. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment down below letting me know any of your thoughts regarding these theories. All of this is headcanon, none of it is actually confirmed by the story of Elden Ring. I just enjoy the story so much, I couldn't help but put some connections together. Leave a like down below, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see any more Elden Ring lore videos from me. I have a few more coming up, so hopefully you guys won't miss those. Bye!